The Parwise Pro is a light meter for saltwater aquariums that measures not only the common hobby unit of par, but also a value ITC called CPER, which they claim is the new gold standard in coral lighting measurement because it will tell you how much of the available light your corals can actually use. So in this video, I'll tell you if the Parwise Pro genuinely is a game changer that could move the hobby along. First up though, there is of course the usual disclosure. ITC sent me the Parwise Pro for free and I get to keep it after I made the review. No money changed hands, ITC don't get any input into this video, nor do they get to see it before you do, and I am of course free to say whatever I want about it, both good and bad. All right, with all that being said, let's get stuck in. I'll tell you more about this measurement CPER later, but I'll first tell you what it's actually like to use. And there are some good things, as well as a few not so good things. Unlike its predecessor from many years ago, the Senai Reef, the Parise Pro can plug straight into your mobile phone. It only works with Android, not iPhone or iPad, but I am told that it will work with a Mac or a MacBook, as well as a PC, laptop, or even an Amazon Kindle Fire if you want something a bit cheaper. But annoyingly, it comes with a standard USB-A connector and a USB-C adapter to connect it to your phone. And the bundled USB-C adapter is a little bit cheap feeling, so I bought some nicer quality Ugreen adapters from Amazon instead, and I have to say it's a little bit clunky having to put an adapter on it to use it with your phone, so it's a shame it doesn't come with a USB-C plug as standard. And the cable is also too long, it's eight feet, which is too long for ideal phone use, and too short for ideal laptop or PC use. And if I designed it, I think I would have gone with a cable four feet long. Now once it's connected, there's no app, and instead it uses a web app that you can access via the QR code on the box, or you can just save the link to your browser bookmarks. The startup process is a little fiddly, and you have to open a web page or scan the QR code, then press connect, then select the device, then press connect again, then allow Chrome access, and finally you're in. Now that is a lot of clicks just to get started, but to be fair, when you've done it a couple of times, it's actually really quick, and your phone screen will stay on while the Parwise is connected, so you don't have to worry about it going into screensaver mode if you don't touch the screen for a few minutes. Once you've connected it then, the interface looks nice, but I'm not really a massive fan of the layout. About 40% of the main screen is taken up by an image of the Parwise that serves absolutely no purpose, and the key numbers that you want to know, i.e. par and cper, are quite small and don't really jump out at you in the way you'd want them to. So I find I can't just glance down and see the result I'm looking for instantly. And I'd far rather those numbers be front and center on the main page, or at least much larger than the other data on the screen that you're less likely to be interested in most of the time. As to the rest of the screen, you can access various other options if you scroll down to the bottom of the main page, or if you select dashboards from the drop down menu in the top left hand corner. Now I won't cover all of those options, but I will show you how I got on with the main ones. Overall then, it is much easier to use than the old Senai Reef, which you had to connect to a laptop or computer, then load the Senai program. And I really like that you can just plug it straight into a phone, laptop or tablet, so I can just about forgive it that it doesn't use a normal phone app, although I would like to see an interface that displays the main data much more clearly, and I hope that's something ITC addresses with a later software update. That's usability then, so what about accuracy? Well, straight off the bat, I need to tell you that this is not intended to be a precise scientific test, and I don't have expensive testing equipment to measure the parwise against. However, I do have an Apogee MQ510, which is probably the go-to premium par meter for the hobby, and I of course have my old Senai Reef. Now the Parwise Pro doesn't come with a mounting bracket or extension arm out of the box, and I always feel like I'm blocking some of the light if I hold a par meter with my hand, so you'll probably want to get yourself an aftermarket bracket. Now I sell this one on my Etsy store, reefdoc.etsy.com, and you can attach it to any GoPro stick, which is what I've done with mine. And for the purpose of the comparison tests, I 3D printed brackets to hold the devices side by side to get the sensors close together for a fair comparison. Now ITC told me I shouldn't be surprised if the Parwise doesn't exactly match with the Apogee, and I found that sometimes the readings were more or less the same, but most of the time the Parwise Pro read roughly 10-20% to lower than the Apogee. ITC told me the Parwise is more accurate than the Apogee because of the way it's calibrated, and the Parwise readings match very closely to the very expensive meters they tested it against. 
However, I have no way of verifying which is more precise, and all I can tell you is that the readings were fairly consistent against the Apogee, and I'm personally satisfied that it's accurate enough for our purposes in a hobby. And I don't really care if my corals are getting par of 130 or 145, that won't make a difference to my corals. I care if they're getting par of 130 or 330, and that can be the difference between thriving and bleaching. Now when I tried testing it against my old Senai Reef, the results were a bit more varied, and I found the Senai Reef would jump around a lot more than the Apogee or Parwise Pro, so having done that I feel a lot more comfortable relying on either the Parwise Pro or the Apogee, whereas the Senai seems less reliable compared to the two more advanced products, which is perhaps no surprise given the Senai is a lot cheaper and is over a decade old now. The only thing I'll say there though is that I've used the Senai to set up my tanks for years now and even though it's probably not particularly precise, it's still been accurate enough for my purposes, which is why I say I'm not concerned about whether the Apogee or Parwise is more accurate and in my opinion they're both within a perfectly acceptable range for 99% of hobbyists. The headline feature for the Parwise Pro though is CPER. Now PAR and PER are commonly used terms in the hobby. PAR is photosynthetically active radiation and PER is photosynthetically usable radiation. So PER, in theory, is a more useful score than PAR because it tells you how much of the available light your corals can actually use. But PER is based on photosynthesis in plants, not corals, and that is where CPER comes in. ITC say that CPER tells you how much light radiation the zooxanthellae in your corals can actually make use of and that CPER is based on various scientific papers specifically analysing photosynthesis in corals, not plants. But at the end of the day, CPER is a new term coined by ITC and not the broader reefing or scientific community. And all I can say is that if it really is an accurate measurement of what corals can actually use to photosynthesise, it is potentially a more useful reference point than PAR, which is a much more inexact measure. And knowing how much light your corals can actually use is, on paper at least, a better reference for setting up your lights. But <laughs> the reason I say potentially is because there's no history of people using CPER in the hobby. It's widely accepted that LPS corals do best in PAR of between 50 and 150, and SPS corals do best in PAR of between 200 and 350. But ask your local coral expert what CPER they recommend, and you'll just get a blank face. So in a way I think the number is probably a little bit meaningless for most people and all of the main lights in the hobby will do a perfectly good job of growing your corals. For what it's worth, in my tests CPER was fairly close to the PAR readings but I didn't spend an awful lot of time studying CPER so that's about all I can tell you. The other main feature worth talking about is the spectrum analyzer. Now I've never been able to measure spectrum on my tanks so I found this feature actually quite interesting and it gives you the data to see what spectrum your lights are generating which you could use to tune your lights to the most suitable spectrum for your corals. And while I think CPER will generate a bit of a mixed reaction, I can see the spectrum analyzer being more appealing to a wider audience. That's not really my bag though, and I prefer to set lights the way I think looks best, with whites during the day and blues in the morning and evening. But it is a cool feature in a relatively affordable light meter, and it's one that I will probably use from time to time, even if that's only when I'm reviewing aquarium LEDs. Again, I can't tell you how accurately it reads spectrum because I don't have a reference device to measure it against. But it read 450 nanometers when I set my AI blades to 450 nanometer royal blue, and I suspect it's probably accurate enough for our purposes in the hobby. So what are my overall thoughts then, and would I buy one with my own money? Well, it does have some features that I really like. Despite a few niggles, it's much more modern feeling and user friendly than my old Senai Reef, and having compared the two side by side, I now feel more confident in the readings the Parwise Pro gives than I do the Senai. And I even prefer it to the Apogee because the Apogee screen has no backlight which makes it difficult to read and the screen times out and turns off after a few minutes which I find really annoying. I also like having the ability to measure lighting spectrum and I'm personally happy that the Parwise Pro's PAR readings are accurate enough to use as a simple PAR meter. However, I'm not convinced of its main selling point CPER and I'm not sure that really adds much at this point in time. It might be that that becomes the go-to measurement in years to come, but for now I'm not really interested in it and while I will have a glance at it while I'm testing, I'll stick to PAR as the number to use 
when I'm setting up my lights. So with all that being said then, would I buy one with my own money? Well, honestly, no. The standard Parwise has 95% of the desirable features that the Pro has, and it's £130 cheaper. ITC told me that the par readings between the two would be very tight, which is good enough for me, and the standard version still has a spectrum analyzer, so that's the one I would buy, and I would buy that with my own money. To be fair, the Pro does measure a much wider spectrum than the standard bar wise, including as low as 350 nanometers at the UV end. And it has various other features that the standard bar wise doesn't, like the ability to give measurements in freshwater. But the main reason to buy the Pro is SEPA, which I personally don't think has much value at this point in time. Although I would say that I appreciate ITC for trying to push the envelope and help people create better conditions for coral health and growth. And at the end of the day, I am far from an expert when it comes to the likes of par, per and spectrum, so I'm happy to be proven wrong by brighter minds than mine. And ultimately, I've only had this for a few weeks, so you should think of this as my first impressions video. Now, if you want to get yourself a Parwise holder, I'll put a link in the description to my Etsy store, where I also sell all sorts of coral mounting options and test kit caddies. And if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for next time. And until then, happy reefing.